too far away still. I don't know. Ah, I thought I just did that wrong. Is that Hello, Mr. Lloydell. Hi, Mr. Pim. Hello, Anita. Hello, somebody from Niederösterreich. Who was it? Oh, hi, Kamya. Very beautiful band, by the way. Very beautiful Middle Eastern band who are here resident in Vienna and studying, I think, at the SAE, um, which is the Sound and Technical University of Vienna. Um, Ja, grüß euch alle miteinander. How lovely to see you all here. Ah, it's Daniel. Daniel aus Niederösterreich. Hello, how lovely to see you. We have royalty from Niederösterreich with us tonight. That's wonderful. Um, good evening. Oh, and lots of dark hairs on the floor, I see. Good evening um, to everybody. Am I? Should I make myself a little bit brighter? Not to scare you all. La, 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 la. There we go. How's that? Oh, yes, I do have a face. How's that? Much better. Uh, thank you. Yes. Oh, thanks for all the... Oh, shocking. I know you did a wow. I know. Sorry, I tried to cover my spots and so on, but, you know, we're in isolation, so what's one supposed to do? Um, actually, we are not anymore. For those of you from abroad, Vienna is out of isolation a little bit. Gradually, over the month of May, Austria is um, coming out of isolation. So today I went into the city and I spent four hours in the city and I had a coffee from a coffee shop. I didn't stay in. I went in, bought it, they served it me with gloves on their hand and, um, and I left and then I wandered around the city, coffee in hand, and just to keep in sight, but it's much nicer being in the first district than it is being on Maria Hilferstrasse, just to let you know because it's much emptier, much more empty of people, emptier in the first district than it is on Marie Hilferstrasse. And um, I saw some quite funny things. There is now a shop at the top of Kärntnerstrasse um, for all of those of you who want to keep fashionable while they're having to cover their faces, um, that sells face masks and it sells disinfectant and it sells all over body suits and a whole pile of PPE stuff. Um, but the funny thing was, well, first of all, a friend of mine pointed out that, you know, at the, they have the, the title of the shop and it's called Mask and Article or something. And then underneath it says like three things it sells and one of them was mask and then the other one was Disinfektionsmittel. And then the last thing was um, Hygiene Article. But what they did at the end is they put, hi Christian, what they did at the end is they put Artikeln instead of Artikel. So obviously I think whoever owns that job, that shop is potentially not an Austrian native speaker. Um, so that was quite funny. And the other thing that was funny about that shop was it's a small shop so only obviously one person at a time can go on in because it's too small for two people at a time to go in. And at the front of the shop, one of the shop assistants was standing in an all-in-one see-through white bodysuit thing and a mask on his face right in front of the door so you couldn't actually walk in. And standing right next to him, also blocking the door, was obviously his mate who'd come by for a chat, who had a mask but the mask was down off his face. <laughs> so it defeated the whole object of the shop somewhat. Anyway, that was my go-to story of today. Um, being now that we are out of isolation, now that we are a Maskenstadt, instead of a Polizeistadt, we are a Maskenstadt. So that was my 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 go-to story today. Right, I just realised. No, no, I can, this is so. I mean, I can turn it around. Look, um, and I had the great pleasure of discovering how to put these things into this file. Yes. Anyway, right. So good evening, everybody. It's so lovely. I'm going to look at my my thing. Hi, Tim, by the way. I saw Tim was here. Very nice. Well, I can see on my phone better. Ah, Frau Smulik is on the apparat. 
Wie schön, guten Abend, Frau Smulig, welche Ehre, dass Sie auch dabei sind. Ja, fein, ja, fein. Anyway, good evening, everybody. We are on the 26th night of 1001 Arabian Nights. Um, it's another very pleasant and sweet story. You'll be pleased to hear. I will go straight into it. And I will tell you that at the end of the last tale, the Nazarene had come forward to the Sultan and told him he had an even better tale to tell than the tale of the hunchback. And his tale started out in that he met a young man who had no hand and the young man started to tell him why he had no hand. And um, the tale goes that he was selling his wares in a bazaar, I believe, and he met a young woman. And as Hollywood would have it in 1001 Arabian Nights, they became attracted to each other on instant and decided to meet each other on instant. And, um, and she being the forward young lass that she was, said, well, come to my house this eve. And he said, okay, I will. At the moment, obviously he has two hands. Our beautiful young youth has currently two hands and I hope I haven't done, oh no, that was the old oh, story, good. So our, current, our, youth, our youth who sells his wares at a bazaar currently has two hands and he's met this beautiful young lady, because everyone is always beautiful in this story, um, unless they're cool, uh, let that be a lesson to you also. And he is now going to hers for dinner. That's how it is. True love starts always with you meeting somebody and going to their house for dinner. So, are you all sitting comfortably? Do you have a glass of wine, tea, coffee, soft drink, cocktail, biscuits, hot chocolate? I hope you're sitting comfortably. Then, let us begin. Now, when it was the 26th night, Shahrazad said, It has reached me, O auspicious king, that the young merchant continued, When I entered, and took a seat. The lady at once came in crowned with a diadem of pearls and jewels, her face dotted with artificial moles in indigo, her eyebrows penciled with coal, and her hands and her feet reddened with henna. When she saw me, she smiled in my face and took me to her embrace and clasped me to her breast. Then she put her mouth to my mouth and sucked my tongue and I did likewise and said can it be true O oh my little darling thou art come to me adding welcome and good cheer to thee by Allah from the day I saw thee sleep hath not been sweet to me nor hath food been pleasant Quoth I, such hath also been my case, and I am thy slave, thy black slave. Then we sat down to converse, and I hung my head ear earthwards in bashfulness. But she delayed not long ere she set before me a tray of the most exquisite viands, marinated meats, fritters soaked in bees honey, and chicken stuffed with sugar and pistachio nuts, whereof we ate till we were satisfied. Then they brought by a basin and ewer, and I washed my hands, and we scented ourselves with rose water musked, and sat down again to converse. So she began repeating these couplets. Had we wist of thy coming, thy way had been strewn, with the blood of our heart and the balls of our sight, our cheek as a footcloth to greet thee being thrown, that thy step on our eyelids should softly alight. And then she kept plaining of what had befallen her and I of what had betided me, and love of her gat so firm hold of my heart that all my wealth seemed a thing of naught in comparison with her. Then 
we fell to toying and groping and kissing till nightfall, when the handmaiden set before us meats and a complete wine service, and we sat carousing till the noon of night, when we lay down and I lay with her. Never in my life saw I a night like that night. When morning morrowed, I arose and took leave of her, throwing under the carpet bed the kerchief wherein were the dinars, and as I went out she wept and said, O oh my lord, when shall I look upon that lovely face again? I will, be, I will be with thee at sunset, answered I, and going out found the donkey boy, who had brought me the day before, awaiting at the door. So I mounted the ass and rode to the Khan of Mazrur, where I alighted and gave the man a half dinar, saying, Return at sunset. And he said, I will. Then I breakfasted and went out to seek the price of my stuffs, after which I returned, and taking a roast lamb and some sweetmeats, called a porter, and put the provision in his crate, and sent it to the lady, paying the man in his hive. I went back to my business till sunset, when the ass driver came to me, and I took fifty dinars in a handkerchief, and rode to her house, where I found the marble floors swept, the brasses burnished the branch lights burning, the wax candles ready lighted, the meat served up and the wine strained. When my lady saw me, she threw her arms about my neck and cried, thou hast desolated me by thine absence. Then she set the tables before me and we ate till we were satisfied when the slave girls carried off the trays and served up wine. We gave not over drinking till half the night was past, and being well warmed with drink, we went to the sleeping chamber and lay there till dawn. I then arose and fared forth from her, leaving the fifty dinars with her as before, and finding the donkey boy at the door, rode to the khan and slept a while. After that, I went out to make ready the evening meal and took a brace of geese with gravy on two platters of dressed and peppered rice and got ready colocasia, colocasia roots fried and soaked in honey and wax candles and fruits and conserves and nuts and almonds and sweet scented flowers and I sent them all to her. As soon as it was night I again tied up fifty dinars in a kerchief and, mounting the ass as usual, rode to the mansion where we ate and drank and lay together till morning when I threw the kerchief and drank, when I threw the kerchief and dinars to her and rode back to the Khan. I ceased not doing after that fashion till after a sweet night, I woke one fine morning and found myself beggared, dinarless and dirhamless. So I said to myself, all this be Satan's work and began to write, recite these couplets. Poverty dims the sheen of man, whatever his wealth has been. E'en as the sun about to set shines with a yellowing light. Absent, he falls from memory, forgotten by his friends. Present, he shareth not their joys, for none in him delight. He walks the market shunned of all, too glad to hide his head. In desert, place tears he sheds and moans his bitter plight. By Allah! Might his kith and kin a man who were the good, waylaid by want and penury, is but a stranger white. I fared forth from the Khan and walked down between the palaces.
street, but then walked down between the palaces street till I came to the Zunwala port, where I found the people crowding and the gateway blocked from much of the folk. And by the decree of destiny, I saw there a trooper against whom I pressed unintentionally so that my hand came upon his bosom and upon his bosom pocket and I felt a purse inside it. I looked and seeing a string of green silk hanging from the pocket knew it was a purse and the crush grew greater every minute and just then a camel laden with a load of fuel happened to jostle the trooper on the opposite side and he turned round to fend it off from him lest it tear his clothes and satan tempted me so i pulled the string and drew out a little bag of blue silk containing something which chinked like a coin but the soldier, feeling his pocket suddenly lighted, put his hand to it and found it empty. Whereupon he turned to me and snatching up his mace from his saddle bow, struck me with it on the head. I fell to the ground, whilst the people came round us and seizing the trooper's mare by the bridle said to him, Strikest thou this youth such a blow as this for a mere push? But the trooper cried out at them, this fellow is an accursed thief. Whereupon I came to myself and stood up and the people looked at me and said, Nay, he is a comely youth. He would not steal anything. And some of them took my part and others were against me and questioned an answer waxed loud and warm. The people pulled at me and would have rescued me from his crutches, clutches. But as fate decreed, behold, the governor, the chief of police, and the watch entered the Zunwela gate at this moment and, seeing the people gathered together around me, the soldier and the governor asked, what is the matter? By Allah, O Emir, answered the trooper, this is a thief. I had in my pocket a purse of blue silk lined with 20 good gold pieces and he took it whilst I was in the crush. Quoth the governor, was anyone by thee at this time? And quoth the soldier, no, excuse me. Thereupon, the governor cried out to the chief of police, police, who seized me, and on this wise the curtain of the law's protection was withdrawn from me. Then he said, strip him, and when they stripped me, they found the purse in my clothes. The wali took it, opened it, and counted it and finding in it 20 dinars, as the soldier had said, waxed exceeding wrath, and bade his guard bring me before him. Then said he to me, Now, O youth, speak truly, didst thou steal this purse? At this I hung my head to the ground, and said to myself, if I deny having stolen it, I shall get myself into terrible trouble. So, I raised my head and said, Yes, I took it. When the governor heard these words, he wondered and summoned witnesses who came forward and attested my confession. All this happened at the Zuela Gate, then the governor ordered the link bearer to cut off my right hand, and he did so, after which he would have struck off my left foot also, but the heart of the soldier softened 
and he took pity on me and interceded for me with the governor that I should not be slain. Thereupon the wali left me and went away and the folk remained round me and gave me a cup of wine to drink. As for the trooper, he pressed the purse upon me and said, Thou art a comely youth, and it befitteth not thou to be a thief. So I repeated these verses. I swear by Allah's name, fair sir, no thief was I, nor, O thou art best of men, was I a bandit bred. But fortunes changed and chance o'erthrew me suddenly, and cark and care and penury my course misled. I shot it not indeed, twas Allah shot the shaft that rolled in dust the kingly diadem from my head. The soldier turned away after giving me the purse, and I also went my way, having wrapped my hand in a piece of rag and thrust it into my bosom. My whole semblance had changed and my colour had waxed yellow from the shame and pain which had befallen me. Yet I went on to my mistress's house where, in extreme perturbation of spirit, I threw myself down on the carpet bed. I threw myself down on the carpet bed and she saw me in this state and asked me, What aileth thee? And why do I see thee so changed in looks? And I answered, My head paineth me, and I am far from well. Whereupon she vexed and was concerned on my account and said, Burn not my heart, O my Lord, but sit up and raise thy head and recount to me what hath happened to thee this day, for thy face tells me a tale. Leave this talk, replied I. But she wept and said, Meseems thou art tired of me, for I see thee contrary to thy want. But I was silent, and she kept on talking to me, albeit I gave her no answer, till night came on. Then she set food before me, but I refused it, fearing lest she see me eating with my left hand, and said to her, I have no stomach to eat at present. Quoth she, Tell me what hath befallen thee today, and why art thou so sorrowful and broken in spirit and heart? Quoth I, wait a while, I will tell thee all at my leisure. Then she brought me wine, saying, Down with it, this will dispel thy grief. Thou must indeed drink and tell me of thy tidings. I asked her, Perforce, must I tell thee? And she answered, Yes. Then said I, if it needs must be so, then give me to drink with thine own hand. She filled and drank and filled again and gave me the cup, which I took from her with my left hand and wiped the tears from my eyelids and began repeating. When Allah willeth aught befall a man, who hath of ears and eyes and wits full share. His ears he deafens, and his eyes he blinds, and draws his wits e'en as we draw a hair, till having wrought his purpose, his restores. Man's wits that warned more circumspect, he fair. When I ended my verses, I wept, and she cried out with an exceeding loud cry. What is the cause of thy fears? Thou burnest my heart. What makes thee take the cup with thy left hand? Quoth I, 
truly, I have on my right hand a boil. And quoth she, put it out, and I will open it up for thee. It is not thine to open it, I replied. So worry me not with thy words, for I will not take it out of the bandage. I will not take it out of the bandage at this hour. Then I drank of the cup. And she gave not over plying me with drink until drunkenness overcame me. And I fell asleep in the place where I was sitting. Whereupon she looked at my right hand and saw a wrist without a fist. So she, so she searched me closely and found with me the purse of gold and my severed hand wrapped up in the bit of rag. With this, such sorrow came upon her as never overcame any, and she ceased not lamenting on my account till morning. When I awoke, I found that she had dressed me a dish of broth of four boiled chickens, which she brought to me together with a cup of wine. I ate and drank, and laying down the purse would have gone out, but she said to me, Whither away? And I answered, Where my business calleth me? And said she, Thou shalt not go, sit thee down. So I sat down, and she resumed. Hath thy love for me so overpowered thee, that thou hast wasted all thy wealth, and hast lost thine hand on my account? I take, me to the, I take thee to witness against me, and also Allah be my witness, that I will never part with thee, but will die under thy feet and soon thou shalt see that my words are true. Then she sent for the Kazi and witnesses and said to them, write my contract of marriage with this young man and bear ye witness that I have received the marriage settlement. When they had drawn up the document, she said, be witness that all my monies which are in this chest and all I have in slaves and handmaidens and other property is given in free gift to this young man. So they took act of this statement, enabling me to assume possession and right of marriage, and then withdrew after receiving their fees. Thereupon she took me by the hand and leading me to a closet, opened a large chest and said to me, See what is herein. And I looked, and behold, it was full of kerchiefs. Quoth she, This is the money I had from thee, and every kerchief thou gavest me, containing fifty dinars. I wrapped up and cast into this chest. So now take thine own, for it is returned to thee, and this day thou art become of high estate. Fortune and fate afflicted thee so that thou didst lose thy right hand for my sake, and I can never requite thee, nay, although I gave my life to a but little, and I should still remain thy debtor. Then she added, Take charge of thy property. So I transferred the contents of her chest to my chest and added my wealth to her wealth, which I had given her. And my heart was eased and my sorrow ceased. I stood up and kissed her and thanked her. And she said, thou hast given thy hand for love of me. And how am I able to give thee an equivalent. By Allah, if I offered my life for thy love, it were indeed but little, and would not do justice to thy claim upon me. Then she made over to me by deed all that she possessed in clothes and ornaments of gold and pearls and goods and farms, 
and chattels, and lay not down to sleep that night, being sorely grieved for my grief, till I told her the whole of what had befallen me. I passed the night with her. But before we had lived together a month's time, she fell sorely sick and illness increased upon her by reason of her grief for the loss of my hand. And she endured but 50 days before she was numbered amongst the folk, the folk of futurity and heirs of immortality. So I laid her out and buried her body in Mother Earth and let make a pious collection of the Quran for the health of her soul and gave much money and arms for her. After which I turned me from the grave and returned to the house. There I found that she had left me much substance in ready money and slaves, mansions, lands and domains and among her storehouses was a granary of sesame seeds whereof I sold part to thee and I had neither time nor inclination to take count with thee till I had sold the rest of the stock in store nor indeed even now I had, even now have I made an end of the receiving price. And of course, when he says thee, everybody, don't forget, he's talking about the Nazarene to whom he told this story, and the Nazarene is telling the story to the Sultan. So, the young man said to the Nazarene, I desire thy bulk, me not in what I am about to say to thee, Twice have I eaten of thy food, and I wish to give thee, uh, to thee as a present the monies for the sesame which are by thee. Such is the cause of the cutting of my right hand and my eating with my left. Indeed, said I, thou hast shown me the utmost kindness and liberality. Then he asked me, Why shouldest thou? not travel with me to my native country, whither I am about to return with Kyrene and Alexandrian stuff. Say me, wilt thou accompany me? And I answered, I will. So I agreed to go with him at the head of the month, and I sold all I had, I had and bought other merchandise. Then we set out and travelled, I and the young man, to this country of yours, where he sold his venture and bought other investments of country stuffs and continued his journey to Egypt. But it was my lot to abide here, so that these things befell me in my strangerhood, which befell last night. And is not this tale, O King of the Age, more wondrous and marvellous than the story of the hunchback? Not so, said the King. I cannot accept it. There is no help for it, but that thou be hanged, every one of you. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased saying, her permitted say. And that was the end everybody that was the end of tonight's story um i assume although we haven't actually discussed it yet that saman will be back tomorrow to read you what will be thank you very much for the likes and the hearts that's very very kind of you indeed saman and i are actually meeting tomorrow everybody yay how exciting is that Meeting some man tomorrow will, will be the equivalent nowadays of having a holiday on the Seychelles or something like that. These things are so exciting the, nowadays, leaving one's own district, district to go out into another district in the city of Vienna is indeed the things that adventures of 1001 Arabian Nights are made of. The only thing we can hope is that we don't meet an Ilfrit on, or an Ilfritina on our adventure because they are normally not good things to meet, as we know. Um, yes, so we're going to meet tomorrow, and we're actually going to talk tomorrow 
about which days we're going to be reading and which days we're not going to be reading because we're going to cut it down by one day I think um, certainly until the 15th of May because on the 15th of May the restaurants start to open slowly but surely in Austria but of course we are an international community on the Vienna Theatre Project reading and isolations page and we want to make sure that our global friends are able to continue to be entertained. Of course, unfortunately, the people in the UK are going to be in isolation until June because they started this whole isolation a lot later than we did. And of course, who knows everybody, right? It may be, hi Katerina, it may be that um, we end up being back in isolation because of course the next two weeks, I do believe that's why they started opening the restaurants two weeks later, the next two weeks, we are going to find out at the end of this two weeks whether this sudden opening of the streets of Vienna and the shops um, and hairdressers is going to be a thing of extreme danger and we shall find out at the end of two weeks whether suddenly the whole virus starts peaking again. I hate saying that word, virus. Anyway, dear friends, it was an absolute pleasure, as usual, reading for you and I'm going to steal Saman's words this evening. What did she say? Remember to go inwards, to go outwards. Did I say that right, Saman? Did I say that right? If you're still online, give me a heart. She's probably disappeared already and she'll, be, she'll watch this tomorrow and go, how could you say it all wrong? Dear friends, it was an absolute pleasure reading for you. I found it a, a somewhat, a very beautiful love story, but a very, very sad tale this evening. Notice the sad demure. Um, the sad demeanor I had about myself because it really was a, a, a very sad tale this evening but um, I hope tomorrow's will be brighter and less violent though I doubt it um, we can live as an, always we can live in hope um, the last time I finished a story of course it was actually very happy because everyone lived to that old age and I think had great sex and were rich and beautiful still so and no one lost anything by the end of it. So it was all good. So, dear friends, have a very beautiful day tomorrow. Um, I know my day is going to be beautiful because I'm going to meet some man and that is always a beautiful thing. And um, have a wonderful night. Have a wonderful day if you're going to watch this later or your day is just about to start and you're somewhere else in the world. And I know people are from India and Africa and the Middle East are listening in as well, which is very exciting. I haven't heard of anyone from South America yet. I'd probably have to check the stats to find that out. But if your day, Australia, I know, is listening in. If your day is starting in the middle of it or ending, wherever you are in it, I hope it is beautiful. I hope you have very sweet dreams. And we shall see each other whatever the next day I'm going to be reading is. It could be Wednesday or Thursday, not sure yet. And one thing I promise you, I will this week. What Saman said? Wait, I have to lean forward and see what Saman says. Yay! Yes, exactly. I know, right? Yay, Saman! Coffee tomorrow and cake. We're gonna be. We can't sit in a cafe house, but we can walk into like. I'm gonna say yours is port, which does really, really great bio bread, um, uh, and wonderful cakes and stuff, and 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 fair trade coffee and all sorts of wonderful things. So we can walk in there because I did it today, Saman, and they have some really nice lemon cake and stuff and um, great coffee and then we can walk out and hopefully the rain will have stopped and we can go and sit in the sunshine somewhere or just do a st what they call in Vienna a Stadtbummel which for the same which for Italians is called a spaggiata I think and it's where you just walk through the city centre look fabulous and look at shop windows but don't walk in so everybody whatever you're doing have a wonderful time sweet 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 dreams this evening be very good to yourself and be good to those around you. Much love, take care. Bye bye. Good night from me. And good night from Georgie, wherever he is. I tried to encourage him to sit down, but he wasn't having it. Good night, everybody.